Defense starts out faster than the C8. Strip sack that leads to a quick touchdown. I was like, hell yeah, here we go. The route has begun. He's the funniest in the world. He's the hottest podcast. With your host, Big Hollis. He's funny. The most talented person I've seen. I'm saying the audience. Yes, so. Yes, so. Yeah. This is Hollis. And welcome back to the Diamond Crew Sports Podcast. I was gone for a minute, but now I'm back. Back again. And I get to talk to my G's and my OG's about my favorite team, the Philadelphia Eagles. Look, we about to get active. The Diamond Crew Sports Podcast has moved channels. Yes, this one right here. The link is in the description below. We did this to help niche down the channel and only focus on the DCSP. If you are already a channel member, I want to thank y'all for that. But if y'all not, do me a favor. Make sure y'all sub up, comment, and smash that notification button so you never miss this work. As hard as it is to say, the Eagles suffered their first loss of the season to the Washington Commanders, 32 to 21. Look, congratulations to the Commanders. They just played better than us. The Eagles, they showed a very ugly game and how he, he made some really big moves really, really fast. The Commanders held the ball away from Jalen and this offense for 40 minutes and 24 seconds. This lopsided time of possession only happened four times this season. The offense played okay, but the turnovers, they really killed us. I gave praise to the Eagles last week for not turning the ball over. I feel like I might have jinxed them this week. The turnovers and the bad officiating really derailed the Eagles. Quez Watkins played well, but had the worst turnover that changed the trajectory of the game. We can't win them all. And our star receiver, AJ, said, He's glad the 17 and 0 shit is over. The blemish may have been the best thing for the Eagles. What could go wrong, went wrong last game. After a big face mask to Dallas Goddard, the Eagles turned the ball over again. Play unreviewable, except the turnover, which really was a fumble. Dallas Goddard heads to the IR for four weeks with a shoulder injury. What a blow to this offense. Dallas cannot be replaced at this point. Stoll, Calcaterra, and Jackson will split the reps. I hope that Tyree does well because the tight end position is very important in this offense. His stature poses a threat to every defense. Cox said after 70 plays, he felt horrible. This run D is hella suspect. We need y'all to get activated. We've been showing signs of bad run D uh, maybe from the start of the season. Maybe it's just a, a bad, stale scheme. Look, very predictable. Time to dial up a few blitzes, man. Look, if Jim had this team, he would be leading the league in sacks with this type of talent. The turnover from AJ was a dot by Jalen. A lot of QBs can't even make that type of throw, in my opinion. No doubt in my mind, if Brown could have had that over, he would have made that play. The last turnover was in garbage time. We was trying to make a play to stay in the game, but everybody knew it was over. John Gannon defensive scheme has been a question all season. I said this in my last week's episode. The team will hand the ball off a lot more to these running backs because they think our defense is sweet. Shout out to CJ Gardner Johnson for his sixth pick of the season. I voted today that he attend his first Pro Bowl. Look, the man is really balling. We are not going to blame the refs after this hideous loss. We are not the Cowboys. The Eagles did not adjust to the offense that was presented on the field, and we witnessed the Eagles' first loss. The Eagles are still the best team in the league, according to the record, only because we beat Minnesota. With the conference so close, the Eagles basically control their own destiny. Because I don't think that the Vikings will lose Sunday at 3. I also think that Kirk Cousins is the best QB in that game. Look, Howie strikes again. Howie does it again. How does he do it? Howie is putting all his chips in the middle of the table. We are officially all in. The Eagles really, really can win the big game. 
the front office is concerned about stopping the run and decided to bring in a few reinforcements to help us across the finish line. How we brought over two pro bowlers in back-to-back -back days. The Philadelphia are beefing up his defensive line after the team signed Linval Joseph on Wednesday. And then how we inked Ndama Kinsu to a one-year deal on Thursday. I really enjoy these two additions as Joseph specializes in stopping a run and Sue specializes in his, he just, he just a big old savage. With Jordan Davis still injured for another few weeks, these, these guys come in and add depth to our defense. Once Jordan Davis comes back, look, this, we're going to be playoff bound, hopefully closer to home field advantage. The Eagles will be playing Indianapolis Colts and their new coach, Jeff Saturday, at noon on Sunday. Hopefully, we can see Joseph and Sue as early as Sunday to help combat that running attack led by Jonathan Taylor, which he was just a little bit south of 150 yards last week. This team has something to prove and would love to use the best team in the league as an example. This is a time to respond with a big win and help add a little bit of cushion between the rest of the teams of the division and hopefully in the conference. Hopefully Jonathan, Gann hopefully Jonathan Gannon can provide the spark the defense needs by putting players in the right position to maintain success. We have to play above our standard this week. A loss will really hurt us. If you're an Eagles fan, I want to personally thank y'all for tuning in. If you're a Washington Commanders fan, if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, if you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan, I want to personally thank y'all for tuning in and rocking with your boy and listening to all this brand new content because it's fresh for your ears and you know I'm coming with it. Bye out.